Welcome to The Journey 2020. I'm Charles Morris, where we come to you every Monday right here at www.thejourney2020.com. We're also on Twitter, Periscope, Facebook, and YouTube. So you make sure that you subscribe to us on YouTube, like us on Facebook. Surely appreciate it. Uh, you know, The Journey been around since 2013. And as Dr. Uh, Robertson would say, The Journey is from me to you and from you to me so we can reach a high level. And that's what we try to do here at the Journey 2020, where we talk about some some fun things and then sometimes we get serious. But for the most part, we try to educate ourselves. And uh, with that being said, um, we can't do it without you. As you know, the third Monday of every month, we have our very own Dr. Kathy Meeks, where she comes to us. She is from Robinson and Associates. She is our sex therapist. Yes. And so we have a lot of fun with that. And she enlighten us, educate us, uh, and trying to make our lives a little better. And this, what's more fun than talking about sex, right? Well, you might be surprised at some of the things that you might learn right here on the Journey 2020. Also, the fourth Monday where we come your way uh, with uh, Haki Nakruma where we're talking about child support and child support and try to deal with some of the, the, the craziness that goes on. We try to educate you to deal with some of the red tape and some of the frustrations that we know comes your way. And uh, Haki really is, is very uh, educated in that area. And he shares with you some of his knowledge, which I know that you can use. So you make sure that you tune in the fourth Monday of every month right here at www.thejourney2020.com. You can ask questions. You can text us. Uh, you can email us um, even after the show. So we'll be able to take your questions and, and concerns, so on and so forth. And also remember... Uh, on Wednesday, I have with me the original Coach Carter, the original Coach Carter, uh, where we have Youth Central Sports at 11 p.m. on Wednesday at www.youthcentralsports.com, where we talk about sports and everything else. Sports is more than just a game, as uh, Coach Carter would say. So we have a lot of fun with that, and uh, so you tune into that where... Um, we have a lot of fun and so on and so forth. And we're able to take your questions and we talk about some of any and everything. And we try to talk in the sense to say what sports is to us in our life and how sports can be used as a mentoring tool for our children and life lessons and so on and so forth. And so with that being said, we just hope that you'll tune in with us on Wednesday at 11 p.m. at www.youthcentralsports.com. That's you centralsports.com 11 p.m. every Wednesday okay now with that being said um, uh, a while back um, before November 6 I did a couple of shows on how important the upcoming election November 6 in amendment 4 here in Florida uh, and with that we I had on Christine Forrest and also had on um, Russell Drake from the uh, Central Florida Black Caucus and I asked Ms. Fires to come back on the show and uh, we get the chance to talk about now all of this stuff that has settled through all of the madness. And, and, and you know, Florida is always a little crazy when it comes to the election. So I asked Ms. Christina Fires to come back on the show. And I just want to say, how are you doing? Looking all beautiful and everything. Welcome to the Journey 2020. Mm -hmm. Welcome back. Thank you. And thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, I know um, that all the madness and all the things that has been going on, and, my, and it's funny because my cousin, she always asks me, she said, what's wrong with you people in Florida? Why is always something going on in Florida? You know, you guys always messing <laughs> stuff up. Just like she lives up. Well, she was originally when, at the time when all of that happened a long time ago. She was up in, in, in Jersey and working out of Philadelphia. But now she lives in Chicago. And she said, what's wrong with you people in Florida? <laughs> so, so with that being said, Florida always seems to be part of something major going on when it comes to votes and, you know, election and all this other stuff. But what I was saying was. When I was there um, getting ready to vote and I was sitting there and I was just like this right here. It's like, wow, something doesn't seem right because these are my only two choices. 
But I, I say this, and this is my own personal belief, Christine, and that is the Republican Party, the Democratic Party, just seems to be a fraternity that is about oneself. And I think because of the ignorance of the people, and I say that the ignorance of the people which allow whatever this is that has been set in place that we don't understand and we have allowed that the system says that these people, they work, they don't supposed to work for us, we work for them. And so I think that's what it has come to and us not understanding that they really supposed to work for us and that we don't say what we should say the way that we should say it in the sense because in the roots of it all when it when it trickles down the people that are in in as far as in office they understand how we're so divided that we can't come together i mean we we come together but not enough and enough voices to make them understand that point and what i mean by that is i think now it really shows just how divided we are in this country that it's the it's and I'll say the little people. And what I mean by the little people, I'm talking about us as a masses of us that make up this country that doesn't seem to really understand how this system is not set up really for the masses of the people, only the few. And so it's always about power and money and not about the people. And there's not a, enough of us in a way that's organized enough to say that's not OK. Now, I just say it a lot, but that's my own personal opinion. There are a lot of good people in this country that want to do the right thing. But I think the system is set up for it to just keep the people up here, up here. And there's not enough people down here upset enough to say this is not right. And so I wanted to, for example, to me, there's something wrong when the president of the United States can go over and meet with the top leader of Russia and say, you know what? I want to go in this meeting and it's just us two. There's no way on God's green earth that he should be able to do that. The fact that he can, and that's why I say when I sit and I say there's something wrong because he shouldn't be able to do that. There's no way that he should be able to do that. There's no one in this country should say that's, you know, that's a good thing. Mr. President, go ahead. But that's the system that we live in. I'm sorry, I, I went off on my tangent. But why is it that he can do that, in your opinion? Why he can do that, I don't know. Um, I wish I had a, a better, more thought out answer for you. What I can tell you is I agree with you when I when you say that it's not right. Um, I don't believe it's ethical. Um, I believe even if it is even just a, a minor meeting, even if it's just something personal, you should still have someone in there to document it, to record it um, so that you don't get into um, issues of a of a he said, she said. Um, on a on a multinational level, um, I think it's dangerous and I think it's irresponsible. Um, but he does have the ability to do that, um, and I am one hundred and ten percent in agreement with you. And you actually said a whole lot um, about, um, as you know, I am a proud Democrat. I mm -hmm. love being a Democrat. Um, it's it's I've always been a Democrat. Um, I'm, I'm really, really proud of that. Um, that being said, it doesn't mean that there aren't issues within our own party. And I think part of that divide and I think part of the turnoff for a lot of people is that the parties have never reconciled when they've done wrong right. um, and they've never owned up to it. And so it just continues to shut people down and shut people out. Um, but what... The way I see it, the way I view it, is that we are that change and we do have that power. Um, we can run for office. We vote. People are trying so, so hard and to suppress the vote 
that um, our vote is the most powerful tool that we have. And so we have to use that in force and we can never, ever, ever take it for granted or think that it doesn't count. Um, and we need to speak up. So, and I mean at every level, so at the county level, being at the um, county level uh, meetings, um, school board level, all the way up um, and making sure that we're involved and engaged. Um, and I think from there, from the ground up, we can see real change. Uh, it's not gonna come from the top down. Oh, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> That's not gonna happen. And see, and this, and, and see this, this is what I always say. To me, a lot of the things that are in place says who we are by human nature. Now, I have no other way of looking at life but through a spiritual way in my understanding of who we are spiritually. I have no other way of looking at life. That's my only understanding that I have of life. Like for an example, when I say who we are by nature, this is my own personal opinion, Christine. The mere fact that you are a supreme judge and that once you are a supreme judge, then you're there for life, to me, that goes against human nature. To me, that would never be a good thing because it goes against our nature. We're biased by nature. You know, we're a lot of things that's not good by nature just simply because that's just who we are. Not only that, we change in the sense of as we get older, certain things could happen mentally, emotionally, so on and so forth. Right. So the fact that we put these things in place by mankind and the fact that that the presidency is which is part of the same thing the things that he can and cannot do. And I'm not even talking about Trump in a sense. I'm talking about what they established long time ago, uh, executive privilege and all of this crap, which means, well, I won't even get into that, but there's something wrong when you go executive privilege. And that's one of the biggest problems we have in this country, privilege. <laughs> and we can go deep into that, but that's, that pro that's probably another show. But it's another way of separating ourselves and trying to say that I'm part of the upper echelon of, of people, of you lower people, and I am this, so therefore you guys are that. So there's something wrong with us in our mind thinking and our acceptance of the sheer separation because that's, that seems like that's what mankind is when it comes to the haves and the have nots. And the people down here, there's so much more of us. And to me, we are, and I don't mean to say it like this. No, well, you know what, you know what I can't say that. Because there's no one that is more important than one or the other. We're all important. We all have right. lives. Absolutely. We all mean something. But that's not how things are written out. That's not how we play life in the sense of life itself. There's always that set. That separation. And this is a, 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 a point that I like to make all the time. They show you how we are by nature. If you're in your house and you have children and your children disagree on, it could be many of things. And they sit there and they have a conversation and they don't agree this, they don't agree that, but one agrees it. Not, I don't think once in your house you will go, oh, were you to the left or you to the right or you're a liberal or you're, you know, you're conservative. You don't look at them that way because you love them and you embrace them and you accept them. You just say, well, you go, you know, you guys have different, you know, because there's really not that much of a difference in this and that. It's just how we like to label people because we want to divide and say that you're less than me. So that's when the labeling comes and how we like to divide ourselves and separate ourselves. Because I guarantee you in the house, the people that you embrace and you in love, you don't put them to the left or to the right. You don't say they're conservative. You don't say that they're liberal. You just say, where you going? You, you just got a little, you know, disagreement because you love them. But the minute right. you step outside your house, all of a sudden you want to separate yourself. You want to label the people. You want to say they this. You want to say they that because somehow or another they're not as good as you. Or you want to say that it's those people. And, that, and that's what I mean by us, by nature and who we are, because there's a lot of things about us that when it comes to us and when we just live for ourselves and see ourselves for ourselves, those things become easy 
because by nature, just who we are. And that's just my own personal opinion, you know. And I know I say it a lot, but it just bothers <laughs> me that we don't understand ourselves sometimes just for the simple things in, in life because the only thing that really separates us is just our mindsets and who we think we are. That's true. Very true. Very, very true. And that's, that's 100%. I would agree with you on that. Um, when you were talking about... Um, the representatives. Um, a lot of times we'll call them our leaders, but there are representatives. And I, I think I said it on a previous show, you know, if those folks are not representing us and our beliefs, that's where our vote comes in. That's where we have to vote them out. Um, that's where we need to, to look around and say, hey, this is a great person, or, you know, an outstanding citizen. This person should run. This person represents my views. And not just my views, but my neighbor's views and my neighbor's views. And even where we disagree, this person's going to fight for them. Um, so I think we need to make sure that that we are not leaving, you know, the political spectrum up to just those who have already always been in it or, you know, kind of been in a family that that just know that everyday people can run. And, and I mean that sincerely, you know, if you have kids, if, if you have a stake in our future, you know, if you see a problem and, and can address it, you know, you might be really good for school board, you know. Um, if you have any background in education, have been a teacher, maybe you're retired, you know what the issues are that are going on in your own county schools. You are that person who can make a difference. And so a lot of times we don't even have enough people to run um, or we're, we're choosing from very, very slim pickings kind of a thing um, or people who truly aren't qualified. So if you have a knack for something, like, again, like a teacher and you saw issues and you were an outstanding teacher and loved children and that was your goal and that was your focus, you should be out there either running for school board or looking for others to run for school board who you can get behind, who you can support and mentor. You know, we can't always look for others to to run or to do what um, we want. Um, we have to stand up and we have to do it, even if that means we have to do it ourselves. You know, is you know what, uh, Christian, some sometimes I become so frustrated um, because just some of the things that they say and talk about sometimes, it's just, it's, you know what I shouldn't say, it's, it's embarrassing, but it's almost like they, 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 they talk like you don't have a brain. Sometimes they talk like you don't have common sense. And, and it's kind of like you look around and you look at the people and you want to say to them, don't you see how they see you? You know, they, 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 right. they address right. you, they, they address you like you have no brains at all. Like, like, for example, they never talk like if the pop, like if the Republicans have an idea or uh, if the Democrat have an idea, it's always like the dumbest thing in the world. And it's like, then they come back like, oh, that's a stupid hey. idea. You, you know, and just and then, it, 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 it's, and then you, you go like they. Their, their thoughts, their ways, their method is just to mess up the whole world. They have no interest in you, in nothing that you do. Everything they do is just dumb and stupid. Then they come back and it's, and, and it's on both parties. Like nobody can ever say, well, you know, that's not a bad idea, but, but I have a better or something like that. They always come and just act like this party over here just is determined to blow the world up. And then just make sure you have no food in your cupboard, no gas in your car, and no home to live in. And you just look like, well, really? <laughs> but that's, truthfully, that's that's almost how I feel sometimes. Um, so, like, when we're talking about health care, you know, for folks who maybe want to do Medicare for All or who want to do the ACA and maybe approve, uh, maybe improve it, um, you know, that um, there's some issues there or expanding Medicaid. 
Um, and others are like, no, we should have absolutely nothing. That's that's on that person. And so sometimes I, I do believe it comes down to, to that. I do believe that um, for like right now, um, you know, amongst Democrats, you know, we, we may argue about Medicare for all or um, improving the ACA or Medicaid expansion, but we're talking about trying to improve quality of lives and get more people covered. How we do that, you know, may differ from person to person. But on the other side, I don't hear any of those conversations except for we should not be involved in healthcare at all. Mm -hmm. And so I think those are, are drastic differences. Very drastic that it, it's not a government problem. It's not a government issue. And, and you know, whatever the, um, there's an ER for that right now. And so looking to improve health care, looking to improve um, means so that people can actually live. I mean, we're talking about life and death. Um, I see drastic contrast be between the uh, two parties. Right. And well, so sometimes I actually feel like it is that that serious and, and that stark of a difference. Well, and see now, like, like for example, you've heard me say this before when I talk about Trump. Okay, uh, Trump, Trump is just, he's, he's, he's like way over there. He's like way, 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 way over there. Okay, he's way over there. And so when he talks, uh, you know, you heard me talk about when he says something like, well, I know more than the generals. Huh? And I'm thinking like, like this man want me to vote for him. And he says something that a three year old would say, but yet he wants my vote. OK, so who would say something so asinine and so darn stupid as say, I know more than the generals. Then he said something in reference when and, and, and that's I'm just giving like one or two because he doesn't say a zillion things. But you look at him sometimes and go like and I can't say what I really want to say. It's just that he he like when he said something. When I think Mich Michelle Obama said something in, in her book about how he put, uh, said something and put the family in, in danger, that's how she felt. And then, see, he didn't want to attack her. So what he did was he went to Barack and said something about the army and something about he that left them with no, which is like the craziest thing in the world, Christine. Everybody knows in the United States of America, in government, they would never, never, Never shun the, the 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 army or the services when it comes to us in in military. Never, America got all the toys in the world and some. So when it comes to the military, this nation is too arrogant and too egotistical to say we we not gonna give you money. That is like the craziest thing I ever heard of in in my life. The country, this country, don't even operate like that. They got to have all the biggest stuff. They got stuff that that if people knew about would blow your mind. But for him to say something like that and the people go, well, yeah, you know, you know, Barack was just going to leave the military without any money. And you just look like, really? Really? Right. Really? <laughs> but it's just little stuff like that where he throws stuff out there. And like I said, like Rush Limbaugh, his whole identity, his existence just exists through the ignorance of the people. And that's how he survived. That's who he is talking and just basically at the ignorance of the people. So that's who he is. And that's how it's just like there's something wrong with us. That's why I said there's something wrong with us. You know, there's and something wrong with us. Work. <laughs> huh? And truthfully, what I would say is um, that's where my struggle is. Um, how to talk to people who actually believe this stuff. Um, I, I, I struggle with it. You don't know that it's French or who, who truly believe that. I mean, believe it like it's gospel. And I, I, that's where I struggle with um, having conversations that, that try and reach out. Um, and, and all I can say is just be an example and be true to you. You know, continue showing up, continue speaking out, continue to stand for what you stand for and don't back down and just continue to, to show where it's just asinine. I mean, just absolutely. 
just crazy. But you have so many people who absolutely 110 percent um, believe that um, this is the truth. And and I I am I struggle with fighting that and how to approach that and and what to do with that. Well, see, like, 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 for an example, do you remember the lady, and I'm, and I'm, I'm pretty sure you remember the lady that McCain was talking to, and she was saying something to him about Barack was some something, and he had to take the mic. Remember, he had to take the mic from her. Yeah. Right, yeah. Like, um, for, yeah. Right, right. For somebody like that, now you and I both know that lady had gone no further than two blocks from a house is like her entire life. Like who, 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 who in this day and time will stand up there and grab the mic and say, and we know that that exists, but you know, just looking at her through her ignorance. And then, like you said, there are people out there that are like that, but it's almost like you need to get out of your little environment because you just <laughs> ignorant as hell. And there's no other way to even... Uh, it's almost like you want to go there's you know there's a side of you that just want to go and hug her and go honey you 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 need to step outside your circle outside your little t tv outside your little neighborhood and you need to try to grow somewhere because right now you just ignorant as hell <laughs> you know See, but i'm fighting for that person too and i believe my party is fighting for that person too by trying to make sure um that that she has health care trying to make sure that, um, you know, her social security isn't cut, trying to make sure that, you know, if she ever runs into a problem, there are emergency services there that will benefit her. Um, and so, you know, I don't, I, I, I struggle. I struggle with how to approach that. I, I, I struggle with how to have those conversations when everything that is thrown at you is, is almost absolutely a complete fabrication or has one minuscule piece of truth and the rest is just out there. And, and they absolutely don't believe that um, they're wrong or that it's, it's untrue. And, and yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. And then you have really smart people who are extremely educated using and manipulating, um, the, the population as a whole and just it's almost like a giant propaganda well, um, and well, then with, with well, other issues like like nationalism and everything else that that's rearing its ugly head it's just it's it's ugly I mean I well, well, I, I well wish actually I had a Christine word. I mean I, I don't want to have this conversation in the sense of the way that it should and what I mean by that is when I say that most of my thoughts and everything comes from a spirituality and I don't want to take it there, but I'll say this right here. Whenever you're talking about us, when I say who we are by nature, you, when you're talking about what you're talking about and when you bring people together, when the truth is that there is a source and a purpose in a spirit, that is specifically there to keep us divided. There's a certain spirit that they're there to make us not see the truth. There's a certain spirit that will be dominant to say and make us believe something that we're not and so on and so forth. So there's, so I don't want to necessarily go in that direction of, 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 of just that because the truth of the matter is it is there. And so when you're dealing with that kind of spirit, and people are unaware of why they are the way that they are and why they do some of the things that they do and when they're primarily dominated by a certain kind of spirit to deal with selfishness and arrogance and greed and so on and so forth. It's, it's, you, you have to try to understand the spirit that you're dealing with. That's the first thing that we have to try to do as people upon this earth. And so that's why I, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that I have the faith that I do because I understand that those spirits are very strong and they, they can be very dominant and they're everywhere. So with that being said, for yourself, and you see it for yourself because when you are spiritually led, you deal with a lot of stuff because you see stuff and you have an insight and you have a care that a lot of people, they don't care. 
So mm -hmm. it's a it's a journey. It's a struggle. It's the saying coming up on the rough side of the mountain. You know, you're going to get your, your your bruises and, you, and you're going to get scraped. And you're going to get cut. You're going to get knocked down and so on and so forth. And that's what keeps you going is because the spirit inside of you and because you understand, because you have a bigger picture and a purpose, you know, to try to let people know about that and so on and so forth. That's why we have in this conversation. But you know, now in order for me to take it to where I, I, I've taken to sometimes when I do have that conversation, I have to have my pastor on so we can take it to where we need, need to take it to biblically. But that's not why we're here today. But I have to acknowledge that simply because we can't deal with it or talk about it because that's the essence of the foundation of each and every day in the battle in which we talk about. Because that spirit is so strong, because that spirit is about evil, because that spirit is about money, because that spirit is about power, that spirit is about I am, it's all about me. And so when you see that high up, when you see that in both parties, in both parties, and then you continue to to for the people that are down here where you want to keep them. And that's what you're saying. So how do you try to educate these people when sometimes and I know when you sit there and you see them, because sometimes I have tears in my eyes. <laughs> so sometimes I'm like, oh. God, oh my goodness, oh, man, how it's just like, come on, open your eyes, love yourself enough to know that you're important, love yourself and know that you are somebody, love yourself to know that somebody told you something that was not true, that you do count, that you're just as valuable as whomever you think may have the, all the money in the world. Your value and who you are and your creation, who God made you is not based on the, how many zeros you have in your bank account because you're still Absolutely. able, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And so with, Absolutely. with that being said, and, 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 and you try so hard to get people to understand that you are somebody, but your value and who you say you are is always listed on your bank account you know that's just like well i'm not a good father because i don't have a certain amount of money well look at all the things you can give to your children or all the things you can do for your child just by being there just showing them loving them yeah. you know that, yeah. that, that's a whole nother chapter of things but we're so yeah. we're broken in so many pieces and i think the people up here know how broken all these people down here are and so they always come at you like they are broken you know, and, and that's what frustrates me. And that's why when I say the system, the, the, the way the things that are set up and that's why the system is set up. Well, executive privilege, executive privilege. And, and there's something wrong with that. And so my question to you is and, and I want to ask you if if uh, if we want to make it mandatory for the president whoever running for the president would have to show their tax return. What is it that we would have to do? There's a bill need to pass. We, what is it that we would need to do? So yes, actually in, sorry, actually in, um, January of 2017, um, there was a bill. It was called the presidential tax transparency act. Um, mm -hmm. it was S 26. Um, and it was introduced by, uh, the democratic Senator from Oregon, um, to try and make it, um, sorry, the sun is bright. To uh, what they were trying to do is basically anybody who was who was going to become the the party um, nominee mm -hmm. for for any major group had to release their their taxes. That's what they wanted to do. So, um, what they tried to do is amend the Ethics and Government Act of 1978. Um, to require the president and certain candidates for the president to disclose federal income tax returns for three most recent taxable years in reports filed with either the Office of Government Ethics or the Federal Election Commission in case of each candidate. And then um, they would have to, then those agencies would take it and make it publicly available. 
Um, and then there the bill also established civil and criminal penalties for failing to file or falsifying income tax returns that are required to be disclosed, according to the bill. Um, because the Senate was uh, majority Republican, it didn't it didn't make it past introduction. Um, but it is out there. So if we can control the House and the Senate, mm -hmm. this is something that we can change. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> it, it's, it's just amazing. Uh, because I was telling you earlier about about when um, I was telling you that I really honestly like I don't know any of my friends that may be uh, Republicans. I don't know. I mean, I may have mm -hmm. some friends that are Republicans. I don't know. Um, I have a lot of friends. But I don't even know if they're Democrats. I don't know if they're, you know, Republicans. I don't. Right. But um, and, and I ask you, do you have any Republican friends? Um, I do. Um, there's there's a lot of people I know that that are Republican. And and yeah, I, I do. We can't talk about politics just like family. Um, I have some family members that I love dearly and and they're Republican. We cannot have a conversation about politics at all. Really? Um, and yeah, at all, it, it can't happen. Um, and it's, you know, we used to be able to have conversations until, um, 45. We can't now. Wow. So. Wow. <laughs> so See. we can talk about things like how, how the kids are doing. We can talk about things. We can talk about anything else except politics. Well, um, but 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 let me ask you. See now, I'm curious. What now, in in your own words, what has changed since Trump has come in? What I mean, why? What has changed? Um, hate. I, I mean, it, so I can't understand anybody who can vote for him. Um, so. I can't understand anybody who can stand behind them. I can understand being a Republican prior to Trump. I can get that. You know, how you view taxes, how you view um, a lot of different things. I can get that. But I don't even view what the, the Republican Party is now. I don't even see that as a Republican Party. That's a nationalist party. And so the things that, that he said while, while running... I, I could never, ever, ever stand behind. Now, mind you, I would never stand behind a Republican anyway, um, just because <laughs> of the, the basis of, you know, because, you know, I view taxes differently. I view how government should work differently. Well, but, you know, when you have somebody running who says that, that we should monitor all Muslims, for example, um, I don't understand how anybody can vote, vote for for him. I, I don't get it. When you well, say that well, all that uh, Mexicans are rapists and you continue to vote for him, how do you excuse that? How does that, how does he even become your party's nomination? How do you stand behind that? Well, and so part of it is me. I can walk, so that's it. <laughs> well, well, actually, uh, Chris, Kristen, what I did was when he was running, when him and Hillary, blah, 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 I did, I did, I think I did two two shows and I brought in my pastor. Um, and like I said, I, I, I can't look at anything. And it, this is, this is just me in understanding my life. And, but I can't look at anything except through spirituality. And so the show was about if you, and, and I, 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 basically was talking about the Holy Bible and what the Bible says and what the Bible is and all of that in which we interpret it to be. And so I said, if you understand any of this, part of this, part of this, and I was asking my pastor, how could you vote for Trump? And he was explaining to me, trying to say, I don't know how anybody can, <laughs> if you're going by this. Okay, right. So if you're going by this, how can you vote or stand with this man? And, and I don't know who the brother is. There's a, there's a, 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 a pastor, and I don't know who the brother is. 
that's been that was like standing next to him, been with Trump all this time when he was going to. I don't know who he is. I don't and I, I don't even remember his name, but I see him. He, he's light skinned brother tall. I don't know his name, but his God is my witness. I would love to go to his church just for myself. This ain't nothing but just for myself. And I would I want to see what he's teaching because he can't be teaching from the Bible if he's standing. And we know it's about the money. So it can't be about. And I'm telling you for myself, I, there's no way. And if you're teaching and if you know scripture, if you understand the Bible, there's no way. I'm telling you. So with that being said, I'm looking at this brother and I'm like, I would love to see what you teach in your congregation and, and the people in your church. But that's just my own person. See, I went personal for a minute, but that's that's just me for a second. I just <laughs> I, I, I'm serious. I'm serious. I want to I just want to come in. Nobody know I'm there. And I just want to sit there in this church on a Sunday and, and not that I'm judging him. I just want to see what he teaching because it's just curious because I'm real curious now. It's like, what do you like? What are you teaching at your church? Because it can't be from the Bible. Because, you know, sometimes they'll, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll throw something out there, a little scripture here, a scripture there. And then it's like, all right, it's collection time. Y'all need to get y'all money. OK. OK, we good. OK, now let's go home. In my Mercedes. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> so I, what I, I mean, I, I can't have I can't have I get to. And then I can't see you. And I don't ever want to lose that that point where I can't see you. Do you know what I mean? Like I, you know, you're still human. You still, you, yeah. I, I just, I can't, I can't go there. I can't have those conversations. I can't, um, and especially when it's somebody I love. But, um, but, it's, but, it's but, heartbreaking. But, but, Christina, I, I have no other way to have that conversation. And the only way that I know how to have it is that I have to have it from a spiritual standpoint because it's, it's like I can't have it where it's about us two. I mean, I mean, you see what I'm saying? I can't right. sit there and, and talk to a Trump supporter about it being about us. I have to break it down from a biblical standpoint. That's the only way I know how to have that conversation. I can't make it about us two because that is not going to work. So the only thing and, that and I have to say, what, hmm? what I'm doing wrong, um, huh? I'm, I am having it. And I said, maybe that's what I'm doing wrong. I, well, I am no, having no, it. No, 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 I'm not no, having no, it. no, no, you, you, I don't know. you, you, you ain't going to ever win that conversation. <laughs> 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 that is that that is not going to happen. You no, 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 no. I'm telling you right now. The only way the only way you can have that conversation is because you, and, and the reason why it's not about you and it's not about them. When you when you when you break it down from a biblical standpoint and when you make it biblical, you ain't talking about you. You ain't talking about them. So when you have that conversation, you don't ever make it about you and your belief. You have that conversation and you break it down biblically. This is what this says. And this is why I say what I say. This ain't me speaking. This is not me talking. <laughs> this is not me talking. See, this right here is this talking. These are these words. This ain't me. That's not, that, that's. And then with that being said, be, because what happens, uh, you know, a lot of times and this happens a lot. OK. And that is when we get into stuff. And when you start having conversations, then it becomes about us. Then we start going back and forth about us. And that's and that's what that spirit wants, because what's happening is it's taken away from God's word. Now it becomes us. Right. And now all of a sudden right. what it's about, it's not even about it anymore. It's kind of like, OK, if you hit me, I'm going to hit you harder. No, I'm going to hit you harder. Then it's not even about what it's supposed to be about anymore. And it's taken away totally what the educational and what it should be about. And so you ain't going to ever win that conversation because it's 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 designed for you not to because you you know what you have in your heart and you know what's right. But that spirit is strong. Christian. It's strong. man. It is. It's strong. It and, is. And, and that, what what I have found is just continue to be an example. Be continue to be the example that that. 
of what a good person is. Continue to be that example. Continue to fight. Continue to stand up for for what you believe and do so in love. Make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. Do so in love. For example, if I'm if I'm out there and I'm fighting for healthcare, it's not healthcare for Democrats. Does that make sense? Right. Oh yeah. Like yeah. I'm fighting for healthcare for for everyone. I'm fighting for healthcare for a sick child, for the person who may be in a car accident tomorrow, for um, you know that the elderly person by themselves who may just have just gotten a diagnosis of cancer, for somebody who had an accident and may have done all the right things their entire life. And now is without insurance, a job, and it's just lost. That's what I'm fighting for. And those those don't have those things don't have a Republican or Democratic label. Those are issues. And so I just continue to point out who is fighting for those things, how they're fighting, and how that might affect the the person I'm talking to without the a label and just continue to be an example. And I don't know that I'm always the best example. I make mistakes all the time. I say stupid stuff. I I get mad, you know, I fight this all day long. <laughs> I get mad, you know? Um, I, I fall and falter all the time. And so, but I know that the fight needs to continue. And even though I'm gonna make mistakes, I get up, own up and keep moving forward. Uh, now, let me, um, it's, it's funny because, um, it's, <laughs> is there such a thing? Is, is, is there such a thing as when the black caucus, uh, when Democrats come together, is there, there, there's something that is being done psych, you know, psychological that it says, well, let's get together and let's talk to deal with, especially now, which I think is very, very much, maybe if there isn't, maybe there's something that you should start up. And that is something that would, can come together to teach each other on how to deal with exactly what's going on and what's the best way pro probably to try to talk with people and deal with this madness that's going on right now. You know, is, 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 is there anything in place um, for uh, something to, like that? To be, to be truthful, um, we just had a state meeting um, this weekend. I wasn't able to attend. Um, so I, I'll be, once all the emails come out and the breakdown of everything that, that happened, um, I'll be better to, to comment on it. But that was, um, this weekend was going to be our first state meeting since the election. Mm -hmm. um, so um, without, I don't, I don't want to speak ignorantly. I just truthfully don't know right now. Um, I know individually, um, a lot of groups, um, do coalition type building where they learn how to talk, um, you know, kind of work together, um, and to do so effectively. Um, but again, I don't, I don't want to speak out of, out of ignorance or say something wrong. Um, but I think that's a, a great idea that maybe we could do at the state level um, that, that we can implement down to the county level. Um, and that's something, you know, we can bring up to the, the president and the vice president and see how they feel about it. Yeah, because especially now in, in times now, um, I, I think that um, because things have changed uh, in, in so many ways and it's just, and 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 I ask you this because when I asking you, um, because I, I ask you, uh, and I was was trying to ask you that you say that you used to be able to talk, but you can't now. But I'm still trying to understand when you say Trump. But what does that mean? What has transpired that that you say you used to be able to talk to? I, I even think you said some family members, but you can't now. Friends, mm -hmm. but you can't now because not about politics. well 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 mm -hmm. that's what i mean i mean but i'm, I'm saying if, if you can't talk about but i'm saying what has changed because things are still the same in the sense of of who we are you, you know because in 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 let me ask you this right here if you ask the question 
in the sense that has something to do with what's wrong, because we all know right or wrong. Is it that they don't want to answer knowing that it's wrong or are they just trying to cover up the wrong? No, I think it's um, I think it's excusal. I think it's blindness. I think it's if it's not affecting them or they don't see it affecting them, there they don't go. have the, the issue with it. Um, and I can't. That's not who I am. It's not how I was but, raised. But, that's not but, what I believe. Um, and that's in history. I mean, history has shown. I mean, I I grew up all over the country and then I grew up overseas. You. Um, I walked the halls of Dachau, you know, of gas chambers. I mean, I know it, it doesn't start with gas chambers, you know, it didn't start like that. It, it started with nationalists. It started with hatred. It started with racism. You know, it's, it started with a belief that that somebody was a scapegoat for your problems. Right. And I reject that. Well, ignorance is what it is, Christine. And then uh, when you're, you're not aware of the reality of a lot of things in life, and again, when you don't understand that we're more spiritual than we're physical, and there's, I won't get into it um, to, to that degree, but when you truly, when you know, and you know that you know, and you know that you know that you know, and then people are ignorant of, among themselves. Um, and, 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 and this is what I was trying to say earlier that I didn't finish. And that is this right here. When a lot of times when we get into our conversation, something that I learned a long time ago, and especially from my pastor, um, a lot of times, uh, we run into people that will know the Bible back and forth and they can quote scriptures and, and they're, they're very good. I mean, they do, you know, they know scriptures and they can just run them off at the top of their head. And then because they know scripture and they can break it down to you in certain ways and stuff like that. And then they use that and then their ego is heightened and then all of a sudden it becomes about the ego and how they know scripture. But what you learn in life is until God reveals himself, I can tell you in and everything, but it doesn't mean anything until God reveals himself. I can give you scriptures all day long. I can quote you scripture. I can go and show it to you, but God has to reveal himself to you. And that's how that works. And, and what happens a lot of times is, is that uh, as much as we pray and, and that we feel for man, very seldom do we have the prayer to ask that God reveals himself to the people that we love and to the people himself. And so it's not until he says, I want to reveal myself. And then also as we talk in the sense of how people are academically inclined, well, until God reveal certain things to certain people. You can be academically able all day long, but yet you can take the simplest man who didn't finish the third grade that can understand something so simple, but somebody with three PhDs, he's sitting there struggling with the simplest things in life. Right. And so yep. until God reveals certain things to certain people, as we get more into our height and who we think we are, you know, it's, it's, it's just, we don't understand because we're so into ourselves and it's so about us and who we think we are. But with just, and again, I understand because I feel your passion. And I said that a long time ago, because I feel your heart. And so I know that you're a good person and people like you, myself, who has a passion, who feel for other people, our journey, we get hit in the face all the time because we feel other people's <laughs> pain, you know, because we feel other people's pain. You know, that's, right. it, you know, believe it or not, that's the gift that God gave us as we get up off the floor again. Oh, I got knocked out again. <laughs> but that's I mean, what God not, gave I'm us, not, you know? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not from, I'm not Latina. I'm not from Central America. But to, to see our country gassing, um, putting tear gas on, on immigrants, you know, that that's not who I am. That's not what I stand for, 
you know, we had so much money to send the military down to reinforce the border, but we didn't have enough money to send extra people down to go and handle a caravan of, of how many we knew were, were coming or the, the backlog of people who, who um, have the immigration stuff that, that's backlogged. We didn't have funds for that. And well, so, well, um, I mean, yeah. like, like footwork, I mean, I, I mean, I keep talking about it in the sense that when Trump talks and there's so much ignorance in this, like he, like he ran on the wall which was to me was the one of the right. dumbest thing in the world. It was like he throwing that crap out there, you know, about the wall. And, and that's what I'm saying. It's just like, can you talk and talk to me like I have some sense? But when you throw the wall out there and all these claiming this, and it's, all, it's, it's bogus. But the, again, through the ignorance of the people, he can get away with the wall. And I know more than the generals and all this other crap. You know, it's just like, man, you just... Foaming at the mouth, you got diarrhea, and and and, and uh, but again, it goes back and, and again. Like I will, as for for Trump and all this other stuff. Now I will give it to him because he didn't put himself in office, and he has all the right in the world to be Trump. You know, he has all the right in the world to be the biggest jack leg on the planet. The people put him there, you know, and so with that being said, it's just like when you look at him and just like the people that you can't have conversation with, you look at them and you be like, what the, uh, you know, like what they, 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 what happens is they really reveal their true spirit and who they really are. And, and that's the sad part, because now you see who these people really are and you'd be like, I used to love you. <laughs> You know, or I want to love you, or I want to love you more. <laughs> but you know, the people I, think are that's, evil. I think that's an opportunity. I think that's an opportunity for us to show who we are, and um, to really change the conversation, to change the narrative. We have to, um, and we have to show up. We have to keep speaking out, um, and we we have to speak in love, um, and, and I mean that. I mean that sincerely. Um, you know, if my brother's hurting, I'm hurting. You know, it, it doesn't matter who they are or what or what they, they look like. If my brother's hurting, I'm hurting. So we need to stand up for each other, show who we are, um, speak up when we see wrong. Um, no matter who who it, it it's towards or against or, or whatever, we know right from wrong. Let's let's speak up. Um because if that's happening to them, it can happen to me. Right. So. Well, see, and, and, and see, you know, you know, again, I, I, am, I am spiritually led, the best of my ability. And I'll tell you, uh, <laughs> the, the best of my ability. I mean, I mean, just like for example, you know, when I say what I say, like, like um, when I was talking about uh, how can, if, if, if if you believe in the Holy Bible, then how could you stand behind Trump? How can you vote for Trump? That's the same thing. It's like, oh, okay, well, I know the KKK is supposed to have church, right? The KKK is supposed to have church, right? You know, I'm guessing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm guessing that at somewhere, some of them have church. So I'm trying to figure out, like, well, what Bible are they having church? I mean, what, like, like what Bible is in their church? It's not the, the, the King James version. That's for darn sure. It can't be that version. So whatever Bible they have in church, I, like I said, I wish I could be, I wish I can disguise myself as a white man just to sit there and just hear what they're teaching. Cause I'm like, well, what are they teaching at, you know, at your church? <laughs> Cause I was like, I want to know what are they teaching? Because again, I'm sitting going like, okay, what are they teaching you? Because <laughs> it can't be from here, from this, you know, because I mean, when I did the, the show with my pastor, I had the Bible. So every time I would make references, I just hold up the Bible. So it's just like, what are they teaching, you know, from this Bible? Because it can't be. There's no way. There is no way that your teaching is coming from this Bible. There is no way. <laughs> so it's just like, oh, OK, because I'm, I'm trying to understand where you get your teaching from, because it can't be from the Bible. There's no way. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> but that's but that's my passion because the truth is the truth. You know, and so and I'm saying if now 
if you something else, that's fine. But I'm saying if you're talking about this and this is how you're trying to live your life. And if this is what you believe, that's who I'm talking to, you know. So that's why I did the show and asking for, for my path to break it down. And I'm asking, OK, if this is what you believe, how? Oh, I know about money, <laughs> money, 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 money. So, you know, so in in where where we are now and I'm asking what's what's next for the Black Caucus to do now? What's going on now with the Black Caucus? Um, well, again, they just had their state meeting today and, and it, uh, or this past weekend. So um, and I I wasn't able to to make it. So um, the what what's going out in the future um, should be coming out and down to all the different counties here shortly. Um, so I will have, be able to speak more on that without having been there this this weekend. I apologize. I, I don't want to tell you a future vision that I don't know. Um, but what I can say is that um, we're not stopping. Um, we're going forward. Um, and what I can say just is just continue to, to make your mark um, and start looking now for the, the next election for people to run. Let's make sure we're prepared. Let's get people out. Let's start having conversations with our neighbors um, so that you know, this isn't just, hey, I knocked on, on your door a few weeks ago to vote and you're not going to see me for another two years. We need to start knocking on doors now and having conversations and following up and advocating still for those issues that, that we got people to go out to vote for. Hey, I went and spoke at the, the city council today about, you know, whether it's the, the trash or the mail or, or whatever it is. We need to, to make those connections and we can all do, do that. And we don't want the same people doing it over and over. That's how you get burnout. Um, so we need to come together um, and we need to start knocking on doors. Um, you had talked about ways to uh, talk. I think we, we really need to find ways to uh, talk with people like yourself who are independents. Um, how do we make sure that our message is going across our party line um, and, and hitting home? Um, I think that's that's a really good conversation to have. Mm -hmm. um, and then, going. For, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, 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 I was um, I was going to ask a crazy question, which is go, which is part of the question I asked before. And maybe you know um, what needs to happen, which I was asking the question before um, about the taxes and. The fact that uh, what we need to do to make sure that a president can't go and meet with somebody by themselves, but which is the same question. What's the probability of uh, what can we do to change that the the popular vote would be the winning vote? Do you know what needs to happen with that? that, that to, to, so my understanding, I'm not I'm not a. Um... I'm, I'm not a lawyer. My understanding is that would take a constitutional amendment. Mm -hmm. um, but I can do more research and, and come back with you on that. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as taxes, that's something different. Um, and taxes, we can change that through a bill through the Ethics Committee. Um, mm -hmm. we, can, we can do that. We just need the, the votes there to be able to get it passed. Okay. Um, so that's the possibility. Um, the president, um, you know, him releasing his taxes does a lot of things. It's not so much just how much he made or, or how much he donated to, to charity, but it's the details. Um, is he thriving off of tax loopholes that affect middle class Americans? You know, if he's giving to charities, what charities are they? You know, your taxes are, are a spreadsheet of your priorities. Um, and so that is huge. It is really huge. And so if we can get that, um, and this also by um, Trump not releasing his, his taxes, that's a really bad precedent. Um, you know, like you said, Trump is, is bad. You know, he's just bad. My fear is what comes after him. Do you know what I mean? So we need to make sure that, that we stop um, the issues that we're seeing coming out now, um, we can deal with those and we can change those now. What we don't want to do is accept bad presidents. 
you know, having control of the house is going to be really good. I think a lot of things are going to start to, to change, mm-hmm. um, but we don't have control of the, the Senate. So it may not be as much as what we would like, but it's not going to be. Um, there's a lot of bad things they're not going to be able to do. Um, so hopefully we can get some good things passed um, and try and, and help people, you know, and try and stop some of this hate. Wow. Well, you know, I want to thank you for taking the time. To, cause you know, it's been an hour, right? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't feel like it. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you we we um, I want to thank you so very much. And I apologize for being late. Um, it, it, you know, first Sunday is, is uh, uh, plus some other stuff that was going on. But um, thank you so very much. You know, you, you you're always so informative and um the, the 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 reason why I love having you on the show is because I just can feel your passion and it and and your truth, and it's it's interesting because for someone whether or not uh, if you are a Democrat or a Republican, or your 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 truth is so truthful that one can't help but know that you care, and um, it makes all the difference in the world. So you should run. You should run, you know, <laughs> no, seriously, you should, you know, so you should say, you know what, I want to run for something, you know, so, you know, come back to Florida, settle down <laughs> and, and you should run, you know, for something. All right. Ser- seriously. Yeah. Thank so you. what I'll do is I'll, you know, you let me know when you're available and if you, if you have something else that you would like to talk about on the show. Um, would love to have you, and I'll see if I can get you and Russell on again. Uh, was, you may have somebody else. That would be in, great. You know, somebody else in line. You know, Russell is, is very informative as well. <clears throat> so um, you may come up with a show idea. You know, all you got to do is text me or call me. You can come on at any time. So, no, well, again, thank you. And yeah. like I said, I'm just honored to, to serve and be a part um of the black caucus i'm grateful for the leadership of president hudson um and for for um russell drake and um i'm I'm just glad to be a part of what is what what i feel is right you know what i feel is 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 stopping all of this craziness um so i'm i'm grateful that and i'm grateful for the time on your show and for what you do um Oh, so well. <laughs> hopefully together we can, we can make um, huge progress there. Well, you know, we will do what we can. And, uh, and the more of us that uh, unite together, uh, that's what it's about, trying to make a difference and trying to uh, uh, appeal to people hearts and understand that, um, that there are some good people out there trying to do the right thing. And it's not always about the money and being in power. And it's, it's more about the people and, and doing right by the people. So with, with you in place and others like you, uh, you are the different makers. And, um, and when people like you, it, it, it's going to make a difference. And, you know, despite what's going on now and your continued effort and, and your mindset and, and you doing what you're doing, uh, we know that at some point that it is going to make a difference. So thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you so very much for coming on the show today. That's Miss Christina Farris uh, from the uh, Florida Black Caucus. And as you know, she's very informative, very passionate as well. And so with that being said, I just want to thank her so very much for taking the time to come on the show. And here at The Journey 2020, where we come to you every Monday at 7 p.m. at wwwthejourney 2020 Com. You can always email us with comments or your concerns. And just a reminder, on the third Monday of every month, we have Kathy Meeks from um, uh, Robertson's and Associates, and she's our sex therapist. Said, Nothing like going to therapy for sex. Anyway, and then the fourth Monday, uh, we have Aki Nakruma from Young Fathers of Central Florida, he, and he educates us on for those who are dealing with child uh, custody, trying to, you know, child custody. 
and all the red tapes and the craziness that takes place with that and the court system. And how do you deal with that uh, when you are finding that, man, this, the system just doesn't seem to be fair? Well, he can help you. I promise you that. So you make sure you tune in the fourth Monday of every month at www.thejourney2020.com right here. And so with that being said, I want to thank you so very much for tuning us in. Hope you enjoyed the show. I enjoy bringing it to you. Questions or comments, you can always hit us up. We're on Twitter. We're on Periscope. We're on YouTube. We're on Facebook. And we're here right at www.thejourney2020.com. I'm Charles Morris. Enjoy the rest of your week. You be blessed. Journey.